the story uh, itself asked me to write about uh, a sudden lost. Mm. I didn't want to write about my personal history his stories or it has nothing to do with me. It's not my family, it's not my, has not, nothing to do, but I, I needed to um, understand what was uh, I'm living myself. I was reading a lot of literature about death and, and loss and grief. But I, I found that it was really um, grandiloquent. I don't know how to say that word. Yes. And it didn't express, in general, those novels I was reading, uh, they didn't express what I was feeling, which was really um, very natural feelings, very physical and terrenal things, you know. And I, I needed to explain that to understand what I was going through a little bit. So I made that story about Paula. I create that woman and, and she create another story, but at the same time help to, un to um, um, understand myself and what had happened to me. Mm. Can, can we uh, throw out, we've got some questions, I think, Isabel, already, have we? Yes, uh, by now we have just one question. Uh, well, Ah, well, two questions now. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're so fast. Mm -hmm. Well, Isidoro was asking, well, the question is, is in Catalan. I'm going to read it in Catalan. Es, eh, per què decideix que la professió de la Paula, és una pregunta per tu, uh, Marta, per què decideix que la professió de la Paula sigui específicament la de neonatòloga? So, so why, the, why, why the speciality in the neonatal clinic, working in a neonatal clinic? Well, I, I wanted a character that was... Uh, um, that thought that her profession was vocational. She was, I wanted a character that she was very keen on her profession. And I thought that, um, that a doctor could work. And then one day I discovered this uh, speciality and I thought that uh, symbolically uh, it made my novel grew a lot because uh, the, the symbology with life and death was really there in the in the profession itself because Paula uh, treats babies which are about to die many times. So I thought that in the same space, um, la UCI, no sé cómo es la UCI in English, I don't know because... The ICU. Yeah, it's a space where death and life uh, are together all the time. So I thought that was very interesting from a literary point of view and it worked a lot uh, for me. Yeah. We, we've, we've had approval already uh, from a former nurse who worked about 15 years in hospitals, uh, Rachel, um, for the accuracy and the fact that it uh, seems to uh, be authentic rather than artificial. Yeah. So just another another uh, <laughs> another I, approval. I contact with a neonatologist. I didn't knew her, but she was very nice and she invited me to the hospital, San Juan de Deu. And I spent a couple of days with her and she helped me a lot with the professional things. It was a really nice work to do. And she's really happy. Uh, the, the, um, the Collegi Oficial de Neonatologia de Catalunya wrote me a letter because they were very happy because it's a profession which is not really known and it's so important. And they were happy to have a novel with that uh, main character. So the college neonatal treatment, I don't know how you translate that, Mara, but uh, um, the, 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 the Catalunya, uh, uh, as the, yeah, Catalan, the Catalan one, yeah, Catalan one. Official, yeah. Official. Yeah. The official, the official, so you have approval. And they, and, and did the, the, the person you work with, does she, did she like the way it turned out as well? Yeah, she's really happy with that. She's happy with that, really good. <laughs> Because yeah. she said that it was incredible because, the, because there are details that she didn't explain me, but, but she told me a lot of anecdotes of uh, the life in the hospital. And then I made up stories uh, that are in the novel, but she didn't tell that stories. And she said that she has lived that and she knows she hasn't tell, she, oh, I'm sorry. She hasn't told me that stories, but in a way uh, her experiences are there. So she was very happy, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Actually, Rachel, next question was uh, posed by you, if you want to. Sorry, uh, there's one before Isabel fro from Dahlia. Yeah, well, the first one, yeah, it was if uh, any ideal collaborators, if the book is adapted into a film or a series. <laughs> so there will uh, be a film or not? Uh, not by now, I would be really happy. There are some things that my agent is uh, talking with and dealing with, but not, nothing is uh, ready 
tancat finished. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay. And anybody you'd want to collaborate with? <laughs> Any actor or any or uh, any? Oh, that actors? would be uh, when I was uh, working with the, the publishers about with the cover. They asked me if I had some some woman in mind, and I say, well, I imagine someone like um, Charlotte Gainsbourg. I don't know if I'm yeah, but it's just an image of a slim woman and that uh, special face <laughs> with a lot of uh, things going on on her mind, but just for an inspiration, yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. good. Okay, yeah. Now, Rachel, if you want to unmute yourself and, and ask your question. Um, yes, uh, thank you very much for your, for your uh, book, Marta. And, and, and I am, I was the nurse, I'm the nurse, I oh. worked in intensive care myself. So uh, I've read books where it, it's not very convincing, but it really was. So it was, it was lovely to read. My question was really about the title. So um, I, I have to confess I haven't finished yet, um, but I'm wondering what's happening about the plants because there's been little hints for me, but but it hasn't come to fruition yet. So uh, it was really about the title. Yeah, the title is absolutely symbolic as well, but I think that Paula goes through different learnings through this period. And one of the things she has to learn is to go through to the light and to the life and uh, stick herself. I don't know how to say this, stick. Uh, agafarsa fort. Um, is it stick to life? I don't know. Cling. Cling. Cling to life. Yeah, stick to life. Yeah. Cling to life, yeah. That's what, um, what plants do, go to the light and, you know, and as Mauro had some plants in the terrace and Paula uh, has to take care in a way of the plants, I thought it was a nice title. My publisher didn't like it at first because he said people will get confused and will think that this is a gardening book or something. And <laughs> but finally we find it uh, it was okay and, and people like it. Yeah, mm -hmm. but it's also symbolic. I think she she makes this learning. She learns how to stay with other people, how to open herself to to the others a little bit like plants do. Go to the light and open them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. Well, next question was uh, posed by uh, Nina, and it is. It says, uh, "How do you think the story would change if it were a man in Paula's place?" Mm -hmm. It's interesting. <laughs> well, I uh, I don't think uh, it would change a lot in this case because I think uh, this um, grieving it's really similar for a man or for a woman. I don't think. And, and what happens to Paula in the novel, um, that everyone, that she thinks that she has these relationships with these men uh, because she wants to try herself, that she's still young and she, she can do that. I think that would be possible in a man's, uh, if the character was a man too. I don't think it would change a lot. I don't know. Maybe because Paula uh, is very close it's a close woman. Um, she doesn't show her feelings a lot. We, I think women in general tend to show more their feelings rather than men. But Paula is really different. So maybe it's, that's why I don't think it would change a lot if the main character was a man. So she's quite a masculine woman. Maybe, yeah. She's very independent and she doesn't need a lot from the others, yeah. Interesting, okay. very interesting. I know there are more questions, but let me ask something because somehow I think it's related. I was thinking because you, Marta, I mean, as the author, you decided that um, it was Mauro who confessed, like, well, he breaks the relation and confessed an affair before dying, right? So then we have a novel with like two main feelings, which are this grief and also like anger, no? Como la rabia, or that she, Paula feels betrayed somehow. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking, why is Mauro the one who confesses the affair before dying and not Paula? Because imagine that um, if you decide that Paula confesses an affair and then Mauro dies, mm -hmm. that would give us a totally, a completely different novel, right? Because the two main feelings would be, well, grief or loss, but not anger, 
but um, guilt, guilty. ¿no? La culpa, <laughs> exacta, exacta. So, why? Uh, si siempre lo hubieras tenido clarísimo, ¿no? Que lo hubieras pero sí o no. Uh, why, sure why, did you, yeah, why, why did you yeah. decide to, that it's, it has to be Mauro who yeah. confesses and then dies? Because, um, maybe because my personal story was so close in time, I mean, I needed something really different. And I thought, uh, I, I need to get angry with the one that passes away. Otherwise, it was really sad for me to write that novel. If she wasn't angry with somebody, for me, it was too hard because it was sad writing about that. And then I also, I thought that literally um, as, a, as a novel, Uh, if something, I had to add something to the argument, to the plot, to make it more uh, moving. Otherwise, just what, if Mauro dies and nothing happens, and all the novel is about grieving and surviving, I thought it was really um, bizarre for the reader, you know? Heavy. So I thought I will look for another Holy. thing that makes... Uh, Paula's mind like a cocktail, you know, it was full of anger and full of mixed emotions and full of sadness. And I thought she ha she had to get angry with Mauro. But I, I remember I, I cho chose that uh, because I needed her to be angry because I needed to separate from my my story. And I, I was sad with my, what happened to me. So I needed something more to, to, to get this distance. I needed to write the book. Okay, okay, great. Thank you. Okay, next question was posed by uh, Tabitha. And, uh, well, it's a bit long. <laughs> it's, uh, she said, well, hi, I wanted to ask why Paula doesn't deeply contemplate, contemplate the, mechanis the mechanics of Mauro's affair. Of course, she meets Carla and gets some explanation and she goes through Mauro's phone, but yet she doesn't speculate on times where he was missing or any suspicious that she may have had. Uh, it seems that Mauro and Carla's relationship was going on a while as they were engaged and all of this, you know. Um, so is the affair supposed to be a total shock to Paula? No, I, it's a good question because I think uh, that as a reader, you realize that uh, Paula already uh, knew something. She imagined something, but she hid it behind her work, which is her passion. And in a way, you understand as you read the novel that she's a woman that uh, the, um, the, the more familiar standard life um, is not really important for her. She's happy being independent, being alone, but she... Mm, she found Mauro and she fell in love and they were good together for a, for a time, for some years. But then things, uh, like many couples, I think, um, as van calma, I don't know how to say that. Uh, las cosas as van calma, no? Y the passion down, Mara? Yeah, yeah. And the passion died down, no? Passion down, but yeah. You put passion in, there wasn't passion in what she said, but you said the passion's well, down. <laughs> They passion them and, and <laughs> he already understood that the relation wasn't working really well. He wanted to get married. He wanted children. She didn't, she wasn't interested in that. So it was okay for her to, she was kind of, um, covert, how do you say that? Covert? No. Yeah, coward, coward. 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 Yeah, yeah. She was like, she, Paula at the beginning of the novel is someone a little bit covert because she, she, she knows all these things and she, she doesn't want to, confront with the truth you know uh, so in a way that's why she didn't uh, go deeper in what, what she was a little bit smelling about her relationship okay great thank you uh, charlotte uh do you want to unmute yourself and ask your question yeah sure um hola marta hola uh, puc, um, dir coses en anglès o català és igual, més igual. <laughs> Uh, doncs, um, jo també sóc novel·lista i um, voldria preguntar-te um, si ens podries descriure una mica el teu procés creatiu. Um, if you could explain a little bit your um, creative process, please. Yes, um, I'm a very chaotic person <laughs> when writing. You know, that there are writers which are called like architects because they know from the very beginning until the end, every scene, every everything, every detail. 
But I always tend, well, always, I only have three novels, three books. So in these three books I have written, I have always start with a character. The, I, I enjoy, I really enjoy creating characters. And uh, it's, I don't know, I start with an emotion. In this case, I was, I, I had this need, I, I said before, I, about writing about grief. And I, what I made is start with creating Paula. I wanted someone very independent, and I make a woman I made a woman really different from me. And then she, the character, tells me a little bit about the story. When I know more the character, I know the what things can I make to her to take her to her personality out. You know, obviously, I know a little bit what I want the novel to be about that the main. Uh, the, the argument, you know, but, but I didn't, I never know the, the end. I don't know where I'm, I'm going. So I start writing and then it's a very strange connection that the, the brain makes. Uh, you see something in the street and you say, oh, I want that for my book. You hear something or you're reading a, a novel stuff. So it's all mixed in my mind and it gets like that. But sometimes I listen to a song and that is fantastic for my novel and I take something from that song, a feeling. So it's really, I don't, I'm, I'm not architect at all when writing. <laughs> and Charlotte was also asking if you have like a routine that like you work and you write every day or you wait until you feel like more inspired somehow. No, I have to work every day because I quit my job about two years and a half ago to write. So I take it as my job now. I make a lot of collaborations, but uh, when I'm with a new novel, uh, I'm a very applied person, I recognize, so I, I have this need of uh, I take the kids to the school and then I come back home and I start writing. I have to write all, until I go to pick them to the school again and then I finish my work as a writer <laughs> and I start as a mother. <laughs> Right, great. Well, next question is for Mara. But Cecilia, do you want to ask your question yourself? Yeah, um, hi. Um, yeah, I was going to ask if there are any like particularly difficult bits to translate, like expressing very Catalan ideas, which you had to find like um, an equivalent to in English. Um, well, it, there, there was one point where I kind of added in an explanation because um, it, the copy editor was like, this isn't in the original, but it, when she um, first meets Pep in the airport and she hears him speaking Catalan on the phone and it's sort of a, an immediate bond, which for me is a very Catalan experience. Like if I'm in New York and I hear some speaking Catalan, I get excited like, oh, they're speaking Catalan, you know, which doesn't happen with Spanish, for example. Um, it's sort of, it, because of the history of Catalan, it's, it, it sort of creates a special bond between Catalan speakers. So I wanted to bring that idea out a little more and flesh it out in English because I, to, to make it more explicit. Um, and I forgot exactly how I did that, but I don't know, do you remember that moment? When they meet, they're in they're in an airport in in Amsterdam, I believe it is. Yes. Um, and so I, I kind of, I don't, I don't know if I could find it, but do you, do you remember what I'm talking about, Cecilia? Yeah. I haven't read it yet, but I will look out oh. for it. When I read <laughs> okay, yeah, it. <laughs> um, it, so that that was. It, otherwise, I mean, it's not a, a particularly. Catalan, not you know, there's not a lot of, you know, they're not like drinking from a porro or something. <laughs> <laughs> in in Joe Confesso, that he uses that to show that someone's like becoming an alcoholic, they start drinking from the porro instead of pouring it into a glass. Um, um, and you know, the tío, the caga tío doesn't show. You know, there were there weren't a lot of things like that, but that was the one moment where I thought this is kind of a special thing. Um, mm you know, inherent in, in a Catalan identity. So I wanted to bring that out a little bit more. And I talked about it with Marta, mm -hmm. um, but. Um, yeah, thanks. I've got it and I can't find, I can't find where you, the warmth of hearing Catalan there, my own little native tongue. 
uh, amid the alienation of a vast international airport. Is that all from you? Yeah, yeah. It is. Well, because, oh, right. Is that right? Is that right, Marta? Is yeah. that right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, um, we, we, Marta and I had a very special experience where we were able to go to a, an artist colony in upstate New York together. And we, we only had met once before after we had already been accepted. I wrote to her and I said, do you want to apply for this and see if they accept us? And she was like, well, I have to ask my mom if she'll babysit and, but okay, you know, and so we wrote up an application without uh, ever having met. I was living in New York at the time. And, um, and then I, I moved um, back to Barcelona and we, we met, we had one coffee before that, but then we went to this amazingly beautiful sanctuary and um, got to sit by a fire for two weeks and uh, discuss minutia. So uh, it, was, it was very special.